This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay. Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome, Baruch Mabo, and Parshas Lech Lecha. Uh, tonight's shir is sponsored by our good friend, Michael Behar of Surfside, Florida. He's a Meshtatev Kavua in our shirim a number of times a week. And we thank him for sponsoring tonight. The Rebbe Shem should be Mavarechim and his family with Besuras Toivos. Yeshua is Nachamais, Hashem should be Mashbian Him Shefa, Bracha Vahatslacha, Adbi Askel Tzadak. Okay, so a very interesting subject tonight. Um, let's see if you've been coming to the Shurim, you know that probably the most uh, common topic we spoke about was the Tanner of Meir Balanes. And after that, I like to speak about Machus Beis David. Actually, I already have. Uh, some thoughts about that. Perhaps one day we'll uh, write about that subject. But, um, interesting episode. Avram Avinu goes to rescue his nephew Light. And it seems to be a Herculean task. It seems to be an impossible task. He's going to rescue Light from the four kings. I mean, the four kings are really the world's superpower. Because the four kings just beat the five kings. So, you know, we're talking about, you know... The allies here, you know, the, the most powerful force in the universe, uh, they just knocked off five kings, and, you know, Sodom and Amor were no slouches, and yet the four kings knocked off the five kings, the four kings captured Light, and Avram Avinu, with, according to Rashi, one man, decided he's going to take on the four kings. So why exactly is Avraham uh, res- risking his life to save his nephew? Simple shot, he gave him his word, you come with me and uh, I'll take care of you. But we're going to see there may have been a deeper reason why Avram Avinu risked his life to rescue his nephew. And we have this little episode with, which I think is uh, perhaps overlooked in what occurred to Avraham when he rescued his nephew Light. The Pasuk says, melech The king of Sodom goes out toward Avraham. After Avraham returns from smiting Kedar Lomer, and the kings that were with him, El Emek Shave, in the valley of Shave, who Emek Hamelch, the valley of the king. Now, what in the world is the valley of the king? What do you mean, what king? The valley of which king? So, Rashi in his first shot says it's Risa de Malka, some kind of amphitheater, some kind of stadium. That's where the king would sport. It was, you know, MetLife Stadium, it was Shea Stadium, all of Hashalom. Yeah, they still have that? No. Different name. It was, uh, right, look. Hopefully, hopefully for them, Mishana Maka, Mishana Mazel. Okay, but um, be it as it may, the, that, that was like a stadium for uh, the king. But then Rashi brings another pshat, an amazing pshat. Medrash Agada. The Emek Hamelech, Emek Shave, that was the name of it. It was the Valley of the King. But then Rashi brings the pshat of Medrash Agada. Emek Shehushvu Sham Kala Umais. It's a valley that all the nations of the world had a consensus that what? And they proclaimed Avraham to be their king, like him, to be a prince of God, and a ruler. In other words, all the nations of the world were in agreement, and they proclaimed Abraham as their king, to be a nasi and to be a ruler. So this is very interesting. Did you know? that Am Ravinu was, was coronated king of the universe. By who? All the nations of the world. In this like, little episode over here, where Avram rescues light, you, you might gloss over it, but Avram was actually proclaimed Melech HaOilam. You know that? In other words, Avram, what do you do for a living? He's a Makarev, he's a Baal Chesed, and he happens to be the king of the world. Who made him the king of the world? All the inhabitants of the world made him the king of the world. Emek Shavei, Emek HaMelech. Everyone made Abraham their king. The question is, why was Abraham Zoycha to Taka be the king of the whole world? Why was he Zoycha to this? It's a pretty big privilege. I mean, uh, they don't say that to me and you. Hey, you're Melech HaOilam. Why do we need to know this? Why does the Torah record this? What is the significance that Abraham was proclaimed Melech HaOilam? Okay, that's uh, something that I would like to investigate. Now, in the Sefer Zeus Yaakov, of Rabbi Shmuel Yaakov Bornstein, Gedalia, three weeks in a row, he just points out that it should be quite exhilarating and quite remarkable 
that who in fact is the king of the world? Is it a, some popularist? Some popularist? Some guy, somebody who just tells everybody what they want to hear? Is it somebody who just feeds to public opinion? The last guy in the world that who you would think would be the most popular person in the world should be Avram Avinu. He's called Avram Ivri because his views are on one side of the world and everybody else is on the other side of the world. The last guy in the world that you would think would, would have the unanimous consensus of the world to be Nimlach would be Abraham. And yet, somehow people deep down, they understand in their heart who really speaks the truth and they were Mamlich Avram despite the fact that nobody in the world agreed with his uh, opinion and his perspective. Okay, that's just an interesting point. So again, Avram Avinu, in, after he redeemed Light, he's proclaimed king of the universe and then he rescues Light and uh, the story ends happily ever after. And then after the story, Rabbi Isai, after Avram Avinu rescues Light, he has a dream. And God comes to Avraham in what is known as the Brisbane Habasaram. Now, anybody know how old was Avraham by the Brisbane Habasaram? 70. 70. Now, how is that possible? At the beginning of the Parsha, Avraham Avinu was Shivim Chamei Shanam Shivim Shana. The answer is the Brisbane Habasaram occurred before Vayyemer Hashem El Avraham Lechacha. That is the, the comments of the Malbum. According to the Malbum, the Brisbane of Basarim happened um, before. But it's interesting, at least in the Torah, the Torah records that Avraham is given the following promise. You ready for this? Look at number four. Yes. I'm going to make you fruitful. Very, very much. I will make you nations. And kings will come from you. What kings came from Abraham? David HaMelech, King David. So isn't it interesting? Not only in the aftermath of saving Lloyd is Abraham coronated as king of the world, but then God comes to him and he says, I, I agree, kings are going to come from you. So to me, for the first time in my life, I was reading Lech Lecha, and it seems like the theme of Lech Lecha is, Avram Avinu is given Malchus. First, he goes and he rescues Light, and the whole world gathers together and is Mamlech Avraham Avinu. Then God Almighty comes to Abraham. He says, Avraham, kings are going to come from you. To me, that's very interesting. So let's analyze for a moment Avraham Avinu and his relationship with Light, because it's, it seems like you know, the odd couple over here. Avraham Avinu, he's very careful that his uh, sheep don't graze in the land of Israel, even though Hashem promised it to him. But Avram Avinu held, it wasn't his yet, the Haknani Ozba'aretz, it was still belonged to the Kananim, yeah? And on the other hand, the Roye Mikne Loit, they're very, uh, they're big lamdanim, and they say, look, eventually uh, it's going to go to Abraham, and we're Abraham's only heir, Avram doesn't have any children, so eventually we're going to get it, so we're allowed to have it now, and they allowed their sheep to graze in the land of Canaan. So bottom line is, Avraham says to Light, look, you know, we can't stay together. There's not enough room for the two of us. He says, The whole earth is before you. He paredna, may Allah separate from me. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. And if, I, and if you go to the right, I'm going to go to the left. Basically, either you pick a direction and I'm, I'm going the other way. But the Lashon that Avram Avinu told Light is, He pared name alai. We're going to separate. We're having an acknowledged separation. You go one way, I go the other way. Comes the Shla HaKadosh, and he says the word he pared is a very telling word. There's one other time in Tanakh where we have this word of separation, and that is when Rus tells Nami, I will never separate from you. Only death will separate between the two of us. Says the Holy Shla, what Abraham was telling Light is, Light, hold your horses. Don't be immature over here. You're, you're jumping the gun. You want to take the land of Israel? Why would you take the land of Israel now? You're going to get it soon anyway. You know when you're going to get it? 
Not by our separation, but when two people don't separate. Who won't separate? Rus and Nami. Rus will tell Nami, Ki hamaves yafrid Only death will separate between us. So what Avram Avinu was telling Lloyd is, why take the land now? You're going to get it anyway. It's like when Bnei Yisrael didn't want to schlep the booty out of Mitzrayim because they knew that it would wash ashore. So why schlep? They're going to get it anyway. So Avram says, why, don't pick a fight that's completely unnecessary over here. So the Shlach HaKadr says that Avram Avinu was well aware who light was, who's going to come out of light, that David HaMelech is going to come out of light, that ultimately the land of Israel is going to belong to Kal Yisrael, and there's no reason to graze on, on someone else's property if anyway we're going to get it soon. In fact, the Zohar HaKadr writes, why did Avraham in the first place hang out with light? The Avram Avinu could have hung out with a lot of people. He could have stuck to Chves, Haran. I guess Haran was dead by now. He was already barbecued in the Orkazdem. Nachar. You know, why is that? what's Avraham's uh, big relationship with Light? Light wasn't necessarily the biggest tzaddik. Why is Avram Avinu so close to Light? It says Isaiah, Kodesh number 7, Yes, Light ben Achiv, Ma chama Avraham ladavka ime Light. What did Abraham see to cling to Light? Ela begin the tzafa beruach hakodesh, but because Abraham saw beruach hakodesh the zomin lemipek mine David that David was destined to come out of him, so Abraham Avinu knew he had to um, save and preserve light, not for light, but for who is destined to come out of light. In fact, the Medrash says, "Vegam lelight ha'hoyleches Abraham hayatzay nuvakar ve'oyalim." When Lloyd, who went with Avram, had sheep, cattle, and tents. By the way, it doesn't say Avram had tents. It says, Avram kaved ma'oid, ba'kesef, ba'bakar ovatsoin. It doesn't say he had oyalim. But it says by Lloyd, he had oyalim. Says the Medrash, what does it mean oyalim? Oyalim refers to ein oyal ela ishtai, two very chashava ladies. Who's that? Who's going to come out of Lloyd? Rus and Nama. So what the Pasuk is saying, Lloyd had a a great lineage to bring out from him. And therefore, Avram Avinu recognized this, Avram Avinu knew this, and Avram Avinu, it would seem very reasonable, risked his life to save light, not for the sake of light, but rather for the sake of David HaMelech. So I'd like to suggest the following, perhaps novel perspective on Pashas Lech Lecha. The Rebbe Shalom tells Avraham Lech Lecha. Avram Avinu is traveling with light. Avram Avinu knows that ultimately, if he's going to go to the promised land, we need Malchus based David. And therefore he has to hold on to light at all costs. And if light is captured, Avram is going to risk his life to preserve light. Now, we know in life, what comes around goes around. There's a rule, the Medrash tells us, that even though all of God's um, methods of how he conducts himself no longer exist, there is one method that always exists, and that is mida connected mida, quid pro quo. What, you know, whatever you do comes right back at you. Everything in this world has a, a boomerang effect. It reverberates, it comes back to you. So what's Avram Avinu doing in this week's parasha? He's trying to save light. He's trying to preserve Malchus. He's trying to ensure there's going to be Malchus and Klal Yisrael. And immediately after Avram Avinu rescues light, the whole world gathers together and does what to Avraham? Imam Lech Avraham. Why? Because that's the way the Rebbe Hashem works. Avraham Avinu, you're trying to preserve Melech Yisrael, you're trying to preserve Malchus. You don't have to wait long until you see you thought Malchus is coming from some other avenue, some other source. You thought Malchus is coming only mitzad light. No, Avraham. Umelachim mimachai heitzeyo. Malchus is going to come from you. In fact, a minute later, you, you, you yourself will be proclaimed Melech HaOlam. So from here we see a very important lesson. When you, the Rambam says, Elu dvarim sha'adam oichel peroseim ba'olam hazeh. Why do you get peros and oilam hazeh for all of those mitzvahs? Because when you benefit another person, God benefits you in this world. And it happens often rather quickly. Avram Ravina was trying to preserve Malchus, and immediately after, the whole world gathers together and is Mam Avram. Not only does the whole world Mam Avram, God comes to Avram. And God says to Avram, by the way, You think you're saving light 
and Malchus Beis Tov is going to come from him? No! You're saving light. Kings are going to come from you. It's going to come from you. Think you know you're doing me a favor. That favor that you thought you're doing for for me is really going to come through your lineage as well. And if, in fact, at the end of the parsha, the Rebbeim Shalom tells Avram the same thing about Sarah. Look at number twenty. Uveirachti Yisa. I'm going to bless her. Vegam nasati mimena lechabein. Uveirachti Yisa. Vahoyso legoyim malche amim mimena you. So you you think you're saving light? To create Malchus, not only is the Malchus going to come through you, it's going to come through her as well. Okay, more Rabbi said, but I want to um, show one more dimension of this. So the Yibar Hashem comes to Avram, he says, V'yaz chalagai gadol, I'm going to make you a great nation. V'avarechacha, I'm going to bless you. V'agad lo I'm going to make your name great. Yeah? V'hayyei bracha. Now travel diminishes three things. Travel diminishes procreation, Rashi says, and it diminishes a person's reputation. Because once you move somewhere else, nobody knows you, you've got to start all over. And travel diminishes your money. Yeah, posh it. You're thirsty at home, you turn on the tap, or you have a big bottle of water in the fridge. You're thirsty on the road, you've got to take out something from the, the fridge. It costs $1.99. You don't have cash on you. You go to the ATM. You want to take out 10 bucks. You have a $6 international fee, a $7 tax, $5 bank fee, and for what, $1 of water, you just spend $27, right? That's how it is. Travel diminishes your money. It's always expensive to travel. Anyway, um, so Hashem promised Avram, don't worry. You travel. You're going to become a great nation. It will not affect your size. I'm going to bless you. It won't affect your, your finances, won't affect your reputation. But then Rashi brings down the famous comments of Chazal. And that is, Hashem tells Avraham, Avraham, I want you to travel, and you have a very important mission in this world. You, Avraham, will be the conduit through which my malchus in this world is recognized. You will be representative of my godliness. When people see you, Avraham, they will know there's a Rebbe in the world. And this is evident from the fact that Jews, when they pray Shema Esa and they say, they're going to say, Elokei Avraham, that God is not just Rebbe Hashem, He's the God of Avraham, because Avraham proclaims God's existence in this world. And not only that, Avraham, it's not only going to be you, but I need you to go on a mission because your whole family will be the conduit of my machas. People are going to say, Elokei Yitzchak, and they're going to say, Elokei Yaakov. Comes Toysvis, and Toysvis asks the Gavaldi Gakasha. We know that a bracha has two ingredients. You need to say Hashem's name. Yes, yeah, sender! You need to say Hashem's name. <laughs> and you need to say malchus. Kol bracha she'eni ma shem, ve'eni ma malchus, eino bracha. Okay? With one notable exception. There's one exception that there's a very important bracha that you don't have shem and malchus. And that is Shemayna Esrei. You say Baruch Atah Hashem, and you don't say, Elokeinu Melech Ha'elam. You say, Elokeinu Melech Ha'elam, Elokei Abraham, Elokei Yitzhak. Where's the Melech? There's no Melech in Shemayna Esrei. That's Toysus' Kashem, Brachas Mem Amad Beis. Frek Toysus. Yeah, we say Kadosh, but we don't say Melech. So what happened to the Melech? Could be, could be I'd rather be holy than be a Melech, but... Uh, you need to say Melech, you know. So Toysu says, in the brachas of Shemana Esrei, there's no Malchus. Why? Because Eloikei Avraham is tantamount to Melech. Because since Avraham proclaimed God's sovereignty in the world, and he was Moidia, Hashem's Malchus, when you say Eloikei Avraham, that's tantamount to saying God is the king of the world. Because the only way the world knew God was the Melech is through Avraham Avinu. So instead of Melech, you say Eloikei Avraham. There is just a magnificent chida on this. You ready? Comes out, who shafts Shemayin Esrei that it's a bracha? Who makes it that Shemayin Esrei is a bracha? Avraham. Without Elikei Avraham, the first bracha Shemayin Esrei is not a bracha. So it's like this. Elikei Avraham, excuse me, the Pasuk says, the Eschol Agoy God, I'm going to make you a great people, that's Elikei Avraham. Va'avarechacha, I'm going to bless you, they're going to say Elikei Yitzchak. V'agad lo I'm going to make your name great. That's for Yaakov. V'heyei baracha. 
but you should know, Avraham, you're going to make Shemana Esrei a bracha. Without you, Shemana Esrei is not going to be a bracha. It's because we say, like, hey, Avraham, that Shmane, the bracha is a bracha. So the hey bracha is going on Avraham. You're going to make the bracha a bracha. Because without like, hey, Avraham, it's, you don't have malchus. You don't have malchus, it's not a bracha. So the, 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 the hey, hey bracha is you, Abraham, you're going to make Shemana Esrei a bracha. Rashi learns the Hayyei Bracha. Yachal, you're going to end with all of them. Tamil Loimar, no, the Chachoisman. That's Rashi's Pshat. The Chida learns, you know, Alam the Shabshat. The Hayyei Bracha, you're the Elekei Aram is going to shaft Shimon Esrei that it should be a Bracha. Yeah? That's Shita's Taisis. The only place we make from Melech Lohilam is when we make individual Brachas on. Food and stuff like that. you say. Yeah, you say Melech Yeah, there's no other place? No other place. No other place. There is one other place. Bracha Achas Me'in Shava. Baruch Ato Hashem, Elokein Elokei Avo Yisein, Elokei Avraham, Elokei Zov Elokei Yaakov, Okei Elokei Avraham, Elokei Yaakov, Elokei Noira, Kel El Yoyin, Kornei Shomai. No, no Melech over there. So the Toysus would say, you say Elokei Avraham. Comes the Rosh, and the Rosh disagrees. Says the Holy Rush. Why do I say the Holy Rush? You want to hear Chiddush? I can tell you historical Chiddush now. No extra charge. The Rush, the Magid, in the Magid Mesharim, the Magid, the Beis Yosef's angel, told him, Asher Kadishi. Of all the Rishonim, the Rush is the Holy One. So I was always very interested in that. Why? Because Why? there's an English expression... Holy Toledo. And there's a big machlokes among the scholars. Why is Toledo holy? Either because um, Toledo has more bate tifla than any other city in the United States. Or Toledo and Spain had more churches than anywhere else in Europe. Or the most accepted shot is there, it's a Lushan Sagi Nahar. There are more bars in Toledo than anywhere else in the United States, and therefore it's called Holy Toledo. But I say, a you ready for that? Toledo is where the Rush lived. And the Rush, the Magid said, the Rush was the Kadosh. She's the Holy One. So it's Holy Toledo because of the Rush. Okay, that's just a, a little secret. I think yesterday was his yard The Rush is yard site? Yes. Unbelievable Siat of the Shemaya. Look, it's the closest Wednesday night. Look, I, could, I, couldn't, you know, I couldn't make it a Tuesday night chair, but we tried. Okay, comes the rush. And the rush says a different shat than Toysis. Because the rush finds another bracha that doesn't have malchus, and that is uh, bracha achas me'in sheva, where the pasuk set, where the bracha doesn't say melech. So the rush says, hakel hakadosh she'in kamayu is like malchus. Says the rush, and what about the first bracha of Shemayin Esrei? Says the rush, hakel hagadol is tantamount to malchus. Says the Chida, I heard in the name of the great Toysus Yamtif that the shakal of Atariya of the Rosh is Marumas and Ashrei. How's that? Watch this. Excuse me. Aroi mimcha elaykai ha melech va'avor cha shimcha li'oylam. You ready? Aroi mimcha elaykai ha melech. I praise my God the King. And I bless your name forever. So this Pasuk is talking about brachas. And what's a bracha? When I give a bracha, it has to have shame and malchus. In the next line, I every day I bless you, and I only say your name, and I don't say Malchus. What happened? You just said in the first stanza of Ashrei. So how could it be every day I bless you without Malchus? The answer is God Hashem Hakel Agodol is in the place of Melech. So every day when you say Ashra, you can chazer over the rush. You say, I, I praise my God the King. You have to say Melech. Shimcha, you have to say Shame. Frek the rush. I, Bechol Yom Avarcheka, Vahalo Shimcha without Melech. And the answer is, Godol Hashem, Ulam Oed. Hakel Agodol is in the place of Melech. 
But Marva Aboisai, what we're learning is saying, according to Tosis at least, Eloike Avraham is like saying Hashem is the Melech of the world. Avraham Avinu's existence bespoke that God is the King of the world. When you looked at Avraham, you knew there was a King in this world. So even though in Shemana we don't say Hashem is the King of the world, you say Eloike Avraham, but if you know that Avraham has a God, you know Hashem has a King of the world. So I want to share with you a spectacular approach to Parshas Lech Lecha of the Bas Ayin, Rabbi Avram Doiv Avarish. Rabbi Avram Doiv of Avarish. He was a student of the Kedusha Slevi. And he was a fiery speaker and a masterful speaker. And uh, many of his drashos were written down when he was very young. And then he moved to the city of Tzvas. And if you go to his shul today, there, a miracle happened in his shul where there was an earthquake. And during the earthquake, he gathered everybody under the dome. And whoever was with him was saved right by the Aaron, and you could go to his shul. And there's a plaque on his shul, uh, where this miracle happened. I had this chus to speak in his shul and to be at his kever. He's buried right next to the Arve Nachal, um, the Levush Esrad. We quoted the Arve Nachal in Parshas Bereshis. So him, Rav David Ivshitz, and Rav Avram, Avraham Doiv of Avarish are buried right next to each other. And he explains a Gemara Brachis. The Gemara Brachis says, until Avram came to the scene, nobody called God Aleph, Dalid, Nun, Yod. Adoy and then Noi. Until Avraham um, said Hashem's name, Adoy Shem, Bamo Eidaki Roshana. Hashem called Avraham Aleph, Dalid, Nun, Yod. Now, what does the name Aleph, Dalid, Nun, Yod connote? What does it refer to? Malchus. Malchus. Aleph, Dalet, Nun Yod is the Sphira of Malchus, the Mida of Malchus, Hashem as Melech of the world. That is the Mida of Malchus. Now, I want to bring to your attention another interesting thing. In Parshas Lech Lecha, Avraham is always traveling what direction? The Avraham, Halach Venosoya, Hanegba. Why do Jews go to Miami? Maseya voice, Simen Lebanon. Because Avram Avinu, it never says in the whole Torah, he went Safaina. He never went Mizracha. He never went Marava. He's always going south. I was stunned. I was Mavra Sedra this year. Um, I'm up to whatever, in the middle of the Parsha. I'm telling you, I'm learning now Lech Lecha. It's Ke'il, I never learned Lech Lecha before. Which is a good thing. I, past years when I tried to learn the Parsha, it was like I learned it before. If you think you learned it before, you can't learn anything. You have to, it has to be Ke'il, you never... Here's my Kasha. Am Ravina is going to Mitzrayim. He went to Mitzrayim. Yeah? He's going to Mitzrayim. He's coming back to Eretz Yisrael. What direction would you say Avraham's going? North. No. He's going Negba. Well, he's going to, to North Africa. Where does he go? No, Rashi says he's going to the south of Eretz Yisrael. So tell me he's going north. He's not going. Am Ravina always goes south. Now, one of the reasons for that, we once saw in the Sefer, of Rabbi Shua Heller, that south is your right side. Because if a person's facing Mizrach, yeah? Then your right side is Daraim, right? Mizrach, Marav, Safa, and Daraim. So facing Mizrach, your right side is the south. Right is Midas HaChesed. So since Avram Avinu is Midas HaChesed, we, the south side is always attributed to Midas HaChesed. And L'chayra, Avram Avinu was pursuing Chachma. But this is something we have to pursue. Why is the Torah focused again and again and again? Avraham is always going south. He's always going Negba, HaNegba. So says Rabbi Avram Doiv of Avrish, if Avram Avinu was the inventor of the fact that Hashem is Aleph Dal and Nun Yud, that means he was the one who was really Mamlech HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And this fits beautifully into the way we're saying that Eleke Avraham is tantamount to the fact that, Av- that Hashem is the Melech. Because that was the message of Avraham. Now he says an amazing thing. We know that Goy um, Sheshavas is Chayv Misa. A Gentile that keeps Shabbos is Chayv Misa. So we explained many times and... Uh, Obviously, I'm going to make a commercial for the new Sefer. So if you want to get the new Sefer, go to Torah anytime. Go to the speakers. There's a link. And you can order the Sefer. 
But the Chida always says that the reason why Goyesh Shabbos is Chayv Misa is because Shabbos is the scepter of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So only God's, only the children of the king could take his scepter. The subjects of the king cannot take his scepter. But the Avram Doiv of Avrish has a different approach to this. He says, to be a king, let's say I walk in one day and I tell you, you know, hey, did you hear? I got a new job. Really? What are you doing? I became a king. Where, what are you, where, where's your malchus? I said, I, I bought an ant farm. And I'm uh, the melech of the ants. He said, uh, you know, you've lost it. You can't be the melech of ants. You can't be a melech over ants. You can only be a melech. Malchus is only possible if there's a commonality and a similarity between the king and the subjects. And the king is misnase above the subjects. But you can't be a king of ants. Or if somebody came in and said, you know, they bought 50 squirrels or raccoons or uh, mosquitoes. Or you get the picture. A shepherd of sheep cannot be a melech over his sheep. Malchus requires a commonality and the melech is misnase above his subjects. But you can't be a melech over a behema. Likewise, says the, um, the Basayan, how could Hashem be a melech over a basar v'adam? There's certainly a larger gap between a basar v'adam and an ant than between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and a basar v'adam. So in what way is Hashem a melech? The answer is HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants to be meyached, his malchus on Klal Yisrael. God is, even though we always said Hashem is the melech to the goyim, no. Not only is He not the av to the goyim, He's not even the melech of the goyim. You could dominate, and you could be a moishel of your sheep, of your ants, of your raccoons, of your squirrels, but you can't be a melech over them. God is not a melech over the umay sa'olam, but he's a melech of Klal Yisrael. Koyamar Hashem, melech Yisrael v'goyalam. God is the melech Yisrael. You know why? You know the Gemara Nivam. It was just whose yard site? The Rush I didn't know about, but I did know it was Rameir Shapiro's yard site. You know the famous, uh, the Bayless trial. One of the big accusations against Bayless was the Gemar Nivamis that says, Atem kruyim adam kruyim adam. A Jew is called Adam, a Gentile is not called Adam. So they said, look, you see the Jews don't consider Gentiles Adam. They must have slaughtered them to put their blood in the matzah. And Romer Shapiro actually sent a famous response to the attorney Maza, uh, that's the story. Okay, but what does it mean that a Jew is called Adam and Oivdei Kachavim are not called Adam? There's an amazing Ramah Mipano. Even though the word Adam denotes that we come from the earth, Adama, but that's if on the low level. On the higher level, the word Adam means Adame Le'elyain. I'm comparable to the one on high. Mahu Afata. A Jew has a certain similarity and commonality to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We're children of Hashem. Our neshama is a piece of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We are called Adam in that we're similar to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in two ways. Number one, we're more stripped from Gashmias. We're not as attached to Gashmias. As, and in that sense, we're similar to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And number two, we're similar to HaKadosh Baruch Hu because we follow the Midas of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We walk in the ways of Hashem. The only way HaKadosh Baruch Hu could be a Melech is on Klal Yisrael. You know why on Klal Yisrael? Because we're similar to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We're Adam, we're Adam Melech And since we have a commonality between us and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, He is similar to us, but He is Misnase over us. He's not a Melech over the Goyim, but He's a Melech over us. Who introduced this concept to the world that you could be so stripped from Gashmias, you could emulate HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and then in that sense we have a commonality to Hashem, and then Hashem could be our Melech. Avram Avinu brought to the world the concept that Hashem could be a Melech to Basar Vadam. He's not like being a Melech to an ant farm. He's being a melech to someone who he's similar to, namely Kalisa. When he jumped in the fire at Or Kazdim and he gave up all physical existence, Aravino demonstrated that a human being could strip himself from Gashmias. 
When Avram Avinu dedicated his life to Chesed and emulates the ways of Hashem, he's now Adam Mele'elyon. Once Avram is Adam Mele'elyon, God is now eligible to be our king. Before Avram came to the world, Basar Vadam was Basar, 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 Basar. Marv Rabbeisai, you ready for this Chidush? A wondrous Chidush. I'm going to string in something from the Sefer, Lemavuche Hauma um, of Rabbi Avigdor Amiel. <laughs> he says something wondrous. You know, until Avram Avinu comes to the scene, what is mankind called? Anybody know? Oh, Kate's called Basar Balafanai. Kihishka's called Basar. Until Avram Avinu came to the scene, God can't be a king. You know why? Because you know what man is? Man is Basar. Kihishka's called Basar. Kate's called Basar. You know what marriage is? Etse me'atsamai Basar mi Basari. Marriage is the union of the flesh. We're animals. We're animals. God can't be our king. God can be our Moshe. He can't be our Melech. Am Ravinu comes to the scene. V'yes ha-bosar asher asu b'charon. V'yes ha-nefesh asher asu b'charon. Am Ravinu changed the essence of man. That man was elevated. Man can strip himself from his physicality. Man could be Adam Adam Ele'elyoin. Avram Avinu revolutionized marriage. Until Avram Avinu came to the scene, you know what marriage was? Our marriage was the union of the bodies. Am Ravinu says to Sarah, V'choysa nafshi biglalech. Am Ravinu says, no, they, they misunderstood marriage. Marriage is not the union of two bodies. Marriage is the union of two souls. Avram elevated the entire essence of man. We're Adam, Adam el Elyon. We're not Basar, we're Nefesh. Once we're Nefesh, God could be our Melech. Until then, God was the Moshe of the world. Avram Avinu introduced that Hashem is Adon to the world. And therefore, by the way, Avram Avinu allows Yisrael to be Makabel Shabbos. Here's an interesting idea. Because Shabbos is when we strip ourselves from our physicality. We make believe all our work is done and it's like we have no physical work to do. We're acting like God. Now, imagine like this. You know, they have these spoofs of the debate. So you have some let's who dresses up like uh, um, Donald, Ben, Fred, right? And you have Donald, John, Ben, Fred, right? And you have another Meshugana Mishug- who dresses up like... Uh, I forget his name. What's his name, right? So anyway... Um, and uh, so it's, it's Mamisha Galechter. If, if somebody would do that in, in uh, Saudi Arabia or North Korea, they would be disintegrated. They would, their, their ashes would be scattered on the seven seas. It's a, it's a bizarre to mimic the Melech. You can't, you can't mimic the Melech. So to keep Shabbos, you're going to have a Basar keep Shabbos? That's a bad joke. You can't work for six days and rest on the seventh day, we're going to put on a God costume and mimic Melech Machi Amlachim, so Goisha Shabbos, he's Moirad B'Malchus. So how do we keep Shabbos? We keep Shabbos because Avram Avinu brought to the world the concept that we're Adam, Adam Ele'elyon. We have the capacity to strip ourselves of our physical characteristics. And therefore, what day of the week is God recognized as Melech? Yismechu! That's why on Shabbos, when we strip ourselves of our attachment to Gashmias, then we're not a bosser, we're a nefesh. So God is, his malchus is recognized. And Avram Avinu brought this to the world, says the Basayin, when he threw himself into Orkazdem, and he was mispashed his Gashmias, and he followed the Midois of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So comes the Basayin, and he reads the Pasuk incredibly. Vayoymer Hashem el Avram. Hey, Avraham, you just jumped into the fire. You're not a bosser. You're a nefesh. You could be mamlech me. You, you know how you can be mamlech me? You could be similar to me. Lech, go, lecha. Lecha means lechaf. To the kaf. The kaf is the kaf hadimyain. Avraham, you know what your mission is? Lech, go, lechaf. You go and try to... Capture the message of the Kaf Hadimyoin. 
the cuff that allows you to emulate me. Cuff means like, right? You know the the Yankel Miller line. You know cuff. You know there's a, there's a light and there's kar like light. There's a Kaf means uh, just about. There's gadol and ki gadol, like, and then there's a guy. His wife is crazy, but if she's not, she's crazy, and then he's up. He's in big trouble, right? No, you didn't get that. Okay. Anyway, lech go lecha to the kaf hadimyon. You have your ambition, your focus, your mission in this world is lech kaf hadimyon to be similar to me in order to to be mamlich me. El ha'aretz to the land, asher areka. What's the gematria of areka? Aleph, resh, aleph, chaf. Now we know, aleph is one, resh is 200, aleph is one. We're up to 202. What's the numerical value of the final chaf? We would say 20. But we know that the menatzbach letters, kuf is 100, resh is 200, shin is 300, taf is 400, final chaf is 500, final mem is 600, final nun is 700. So areka is 702. Shabbos. Ela Arts Ashareka, go to the Kaf Hadimyoin. You have the capacity to emulate me, to be similar to me. And if you're similar to me, then you could be Mamlich me. I want to read, that's the Hemshech of the Pasik. Lech Lecha, go and try to capture the, the Kaf Hadimyoin. Be similar to me. El Ha'aretz Ashareka. And you know what you'll be able to do if you become similar to me? If you recognize me when you're similar to me, the Escha Legoi Gadol, then God, the Jewish people are going to say like hey, Avram, and if they say like hey, Avram, the hey, hey, bracha, that will be mamlich me. Because if you're Adam Me'ale'elyon and you're similar to me, then you could be mamlich me. Just the, the mere mention of like hey, Avram is tantamount to Malchus. Now watch this. So we like to suggest the mission of Lech Lecha, the mission statement is God tells Avraham your job in this world is I don't want mankind to be nefesh anymore, excuse me, basar anymore, I want them to be nefesh. And if they're nefesh and they have a similarity to me, that will be mamlech me. So ah, the whole parashas lech lecha, Am Ravinu is trying to be mamlech Hashem. He says, God is aleph dalet nun yud. So I would say that there's one small ingredient missing in Avraham that he's not similar to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and that would diminish the Malchus Shamayim. And that is, who in this world is the the one who is the conduit of Malchus Shamayim in this world? Who represents Malchus Shemayim? The Malchus based David. That's why David and Malchus is the fourth regal of the Kisiyah Kavod. Avraham, you want to make Hashem the Melech because you're going to say mankind is Nefesh and there's a commonality between Klal Yisrael and Hashem. But it's not like we're kings and Hashem is the king of kings. Don't we need that similarity? Wouldn't it be the most compelling way to be Mamlech Hashem, that if even a Melech recognized Hashem's superiority, that would be the ultimate symbol of God as Melech HaOlam. So Hashem says, Lech Lecha, you could be so similar to me, that you're going to be a king in this parsha. <laughs> You know how you're going to be Mamlech me? The whole world is going to gather together and say, you know what about Avram? Avraham's the king of the world. And then Avraham is going to say, no, 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 no. Ma, I, I'm not a melech because I recognize the Islam. That Avraham is, is going to have the availability and possibility to have such commonality between him and the Rebbe Islam. Ad kach, that not only he, is he stripping himself of his physicality and emulating the ways of Hashem, he himself is a melech of the world and he's still menaseh HaKadosh Baruch that's the greatest Kabbalah so Malchus Shemayim. So Hashem says, look, the whole world is Mamlech you. And I'm telling you that kings are going to come from you. And I'm telling Sarah, kings are going to come from her. And even though Malchus is coming from you, and we're saying it's Mida, can I get Mida? Because Avram rescued Lloyd and he preserved Malchus. And you're being Mamlech me. The words are like, hey, Avraham forever embody the ideal that Hashem is Melech Ha'ilam.
Now, one last thing. It's sort of a side point. It's literally one of the most ennobling things I've ever heard. I said this over in the yeshiva, Shavei Chevron, <laughs> overlooking the Maras HaHpela and the whole city of Chevron. This is one of the most magnificent thoughts I ever saw. There's a Sefer, Neflois Mitairas Hashem Mizbarach. Honestly, I never heard of it. The only time I ever heard of it is in, I once read an article where they were interviewing Aaron Cutler, CEO. And he said he used to do Kirov, and this was his go-to Sefer. That was the first time I heard of this, of the Sefer. And then I saw of Moshe Wolfson quoted it. And the Sefer is based on the following principle. I once even said it in a shir, but in this context, it's, it's just off the charts. God in this week's parasha comes to Abraham. He says, Abraham, umelachim mimacha yitzayu. Not only will kings fr- come from you, and he says, uh, number 20, you beirachti oisa, uh, you, kings will come from Sarah. Okay? So Abraham you know, gets a good, good word, good report. Abraham, kings will come from you. Sarah, kings will come from you. Who are the kings? Who is the greatest king of Israel? David. So Abraham Avinu, this week's parasha, he get, Amr Avinu thought he's saving light to save David. Hashem says, no, David's coming from you also. Does anybody know where was Avraham located at the time that Hashem said to Avraham, kings are going to come from you? So you have to read the parsha carefully, because in the opening parsha, Vayavra Avraham Ba'aretz, Ad Mekoim Shechem, First it goes to Shechem, which, is, which is boggles the mind. Avinu never stepped foot in Eretz Yisrael. The first place he goes is, he has to daven in Shechem. Nablus, you know. Then he goes to Ai, to daven for Achan. You know, I, tonight's the Rachel Imenu's yard site. I would have gone, he should have gone to Kever Rachel, the Kaisal, no. First he goes to Shechem, and then he goes to Ai, the most like notorious place. That's interesting to me. Then, right before Lloyd is captured, check this out, the Pasuk says in number 17, Vayel Avram, Vayavoy, Vayesha, Beiloy Neimamre, Yashar B'Chevroin. He's in Chevroin. Then Lloyd is captured. And then, L'Chaira, Avram go, doesn't say he went anywhere else, he must have gone back to Chevron. So where did God say, Kings are, David will come from you? Chevroin. So, yeah? Says the Sefer Neflois Mitar Sashem. Where was David coronated by the Malchai Yehud, by the, the tribe of Yehuda? Look at number 18. The men that were with him brought him up. They went to Hebron. Oh, they're in Hebron. And the Shevet Yehuda is Mamlech David. Fine. What about the other ten tribes? Look at number 21, a few prakam later. All of Israel comes to Hebron. And what do they do there? They anoint David. We are Hebron. Was it coincidence that David was anointed in Hebron? No. Because, by the way, look at number 22. David had asked God, God, where should I go when they anoint me? God says, Hebron. God says in the Flores of Tars Hashem, you think it's a coincidence? Avraham was in so many locations in Eretz Israel. He was in Shechem, he was in Ai, he was in Beersheba, he was north, he was south. God could have told him in any one of these places, you're going to have David, you're going to have David, you're going to have David, you're going to have David. He Davka told him in Hebron. You know why? There's a principle in Nevoah that when God says Nevoah, He's talking not only to the Navi, He's talking to the stones, He's talking to the sticks, He's talking to the air, He's talking to the earth. And He's saying, David will come to you, so you sticks and stones, I want you to bear witness that in exactly 837 years, in this very spot, this prophecy will come to fruition. Because when God speaks prophecy in a location, it's not happenstance, it then comes back to be fulfilled in that very makayim. So since God, you know why God told Abraham, kings are going to come to you? 
You know why he said it to him in Hebron? Listen to the Flores Mitaras Hashem. When God tells a Navi in Hebron, kings are going to come for you, it's as if he said, Avraham, kings are going to come from you in this spot. And there are many, many examples of this in, in the Torah, that the Nevuah that's spoken in a spot comes to fruition in that very spot. Hebron then is the city of kings. When was Avraham Avinu, when did he travel to Hebron? Parshas Lechacha. Parshas Lechacha is the city of Malchus. Why is it the city of Malchus? Because Avraham Avinu's mission in this world is to be Mamlech HaKadosh Baruch And who else is Mamlech HaKadosh Baruch David. David is the regal ravi of, of the Kisei HaKavayd. In order to be Mamlech Hashem, Hashem has to have a commonality with us. That commonality is we're Adam El Elyon, the greatest Adam El Elyon. Why is David Amelech the, the one that projects Hashem's Machus to the world? Because it takes one to know one. Only Ad, an Adam, that's Adam El Elyon, who's Mamish Amelech, could project the Machus of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's the city of Hebron, by the way. We could say as follows. When they were Mamlech Avraham Avinu, what city did they do that in? When the whole world got together to be Mamlech Avraham, that happened in Sodom. It says, Sodom Lekrosam. Sodom is where David was also pulled out from. So Sodom also is a city of Malchus. But what we're saying is, according to the Bas Ayin, that Hashem tells Abraham, if in order for you to be Mamlechmi, in order for you to bring to the world the concept that I'm Aleph Dalad Nun Yud, that I'm the Melech Ha'ilam, we ha- there has to be a commonality between Yisrael and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That is accomplished by being Mufshud from Gashmias, by emulating the ways of Hashem. And also by Avraham being recognized as a melech, and even so, he is Menasseh HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that is the strongest commonality, and because of that and through that, Eloike Avraham is tantamount, the essence of Avraham, being similar to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in every sense, just saying those words is tantamount to saying Hashem is the melech of the world. Rabbi Isai, have a great evening. Shkayach. Okay. And just to be mashlem, the added point, why is Avraham Avinu always going Hanegba, Hanegba, Hanegma? Even when he's returning from Mitzrayim, he's going Hanegba, but he's going north. The answer is, says the Basayin, the gematria of Hanegba is 65. Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yud. That was the Avoida of Avraham to project Hashem's Malchus to the world, where he became so identified with the idea that Hashem is the Melech, that when we say Eloike Avraham, that in fact is tantamount to saying Hashem is Melech HaOilam. Wishing everyone, Bracha V'Hatzlacha. You've just experienced another Torah class, brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.